Amen. We do wish you a Merry Christmas. And uh, just due to the circumstances of the world last week, last week's service was kind of heavy. And we just determined that this week was just going to be fun and rejoicing and happy today. And um, so, yeah, it's a good day to be here in the house of the Lord. Going to make a couple of announcements, and then Benny's going to come and, and uh, encourage you about something else. But um, if you will take out that multiple folded bulletin in your hand there and open that bad boy up, there's some stuff in there. And one of them at the top that got left out accidentally by me last week in the bulletin was this women's fellowship on january 5th it's at carol kelly's house carol raise your hand over there so they know who to come to lady in red right over there on the end and she's having a women's fellowship she's hosting that at her house on january the 5th at 11 a.m and if you want details about how that's all going to work and where she lives and all that her phone number's in there you give her a call she'll set you right up she'll tell you how to get there and tell you what to bring and all that good stuff it's wonderful um, there's some other stuff at the back on the resource table. Uh, there's that brochure about um, people who have been a victim of sexual abuse in Hawaii. There's uh, the Hawaiian Islands Ministries volunteer form. All of that's back there. Um, but we wanted to congratulate. Oh, we just yeah. Okay. We wanted to congratulate uh, uh, a couple that are not here this morning, but they they're on their honeymoon. Uh, but that is uh, Bonnie Holcomb and Norm Fontana got married Friday at Kailua Beach, and so uh, Bonnie is now Bonnie Fontana. It's going to take me a while to get used to that because I've known her as Bonnie Holcomb for like 40 years. So, but uh, yeah, they're on their honeymoon, and it was a lovely ceremony and a lovely uh, reception on Friday. Those of you who couldn't be there, you can see some pictures on Facebook and take a look at it. It was, it was lovely, and um, yeah, and we've already said goodbye to the family who are going to be leaving us, which we don't like at all, but uh, that's in the bulletin too. And Benny's going to come and uh, talk to you about one other event that we really want you to take part in. God bless you guys and Merry Christmas. Um, I'm just here uh, quickly to boost some uh, youth stuff that we got going on within the next uh, week, coming weeks. Uh, this Saturday, all of you know that uh, Bishop Trevor Reed, our international youth director, will be with us next Sunday here in Reunion. We are very excited about that. But uh, also... Um, because he is a youth director, we wanted to give a special time for him to minister to our youth. So this Saturday at the YPO Baptist uh, Church, uh, doors are going to open at 615. We are having an event that we are calling the Countdown. It is our way of winding down 2012 and saying hello to 2013. And it's a couple days before New Year's, but, but uh, there's some things that we want to minister to our youth that night. So if we are inviting all of our youth to be there. NYPO, uh, 6 o'clock on Saturday, we're going to have uh, Bishop Reed preach. Uh, our friends from All Nations Fellowship will be leading worship. There will be other youth groups uh, from other churches around here on the island that will be with us. Uh, so we ask that youth, and this is from junior high to college age, all right, so all of the youth, I want you to come. This, and you know what, really, if they're your parents, uh, some of the other ones, if you want to come, you are more than welcome to come. But this event is for our young people and uh, directed for them. Um, and also, uh, we're asking, we need some help when it comes to this Saturday. Um, we're asking for people to just, if they can, if they're able to be there, we're going to need some help. Um, so if you can volunteer on that day, even if you can't go this Saturday, there's still a way for you to help. So if you just want to help out, please come see me or, or Jerry L. And uh, that way we can get you guys on board and help us out. Also, real quickly, uh, January 10th which is a Thursday at Windward, uh, we are kicking off our Engage uh, College and Career Ministries. So for all the uh, 18, 18 to 30, uh, this is for you. And so we're going to start off on uh, Thursday, January tw uh, 10th at 7 o'clock, I think we said, at Windward. Um, but this Saturday is the first thing that we got coming up. So we hope to see you and come out, support our youth, pray for our youth, because I really feel God is about to do some, some mighty things in our young people. Amen. All right, guys. Merry Christmas. The Holy Spirit is leading us.
to pursue the young harvest in community. Today's youth culture is more diverse than even the early church was in this text. They're different, different languages, different terminologies and colloquialism. It's a different world. But even though they're strange and weird and look like they came from somebody else, they're yours. But not only are they yours, they are longing for community. They're craving for relation. Why is it the social networks are exploding? Why is it gangs are infesting the inner city and influencing our youth? Why is it? Why is it that false religions like Islam and, and voodoo and witchcraft are being able to literally crouch in on our Christian youth? Because these false religions have understood something about relationships. That if I can get them relationally connected, I can bind them. We know community. I don't know who you are, but you're still my family. You're still my brother. You're still my mother. You're still my friend. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to protect you. I got your back. that next Sunday. Trevor's going to be here. Uh, actually, his family's arriving, I think, the day after Christmas, and they'll be in Waikiki and have a little time, family time, and then they'll be, they'll be coming to see us here. Um, I want you to turn in your bulletin or, or your Bible, if you have it with you, to that passage that we've read every week in December. We're going to read it one more time today, but I want you to think of it in a different context today as we shift gears and go into this because we're going to be talking about keeping Christmas real. Keeping it real. So here's what happens. We picture shepherds out in the field and, you know, harps and angels drifting down from the sky and, and this heavenly hush, you know, silent night, holy night. I doubt if it was very silent at all. A woman giving birth is seldom silent. It's... And it doesn't feel real holy sometimes. There's, there's pain and, and noise. And if they were in a barn full of animals, the animals were making noise when she made noise. They'll respond. And so I want you to get those, those children's Sunday school book pictures of the nativity out of your head for a few minutes. And I want you to think about this in terms of of the real world because Jesus was becoming, He was Emmanuel, God with us, coming in to be born into flesh, to live and dwell among us. And it was very real and it was very human. So follow this passage along as we read it one last time this week with that picture in mind of it being reality. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi came from the east Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw a star in the east and have come to, get this key word, worship him. We have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea. They replied, for this is what the prophet has written, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed on coming to the house. They saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down, and here's that word again, worshipped him.
Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. I want you to notice that the word worship is in that passage three times. And before they presented their gifts to him, they worshipped him. That's the greatest gift we bring to Jesus this morning. We've just sung some songs and that's an act of worship. We've just loved on some folks that we appreciate a lot. That's an act of worship. We've just given of our first and our best in tithes and offerings. That's an act of worship. And in just a few minutes, we're going to partake of communion. And that will be an act of worship. But I want you to get this picture of keeping it real, keeping Christmas real, as you watch this brief video. And then we're going to have a time of prayer and communion. I like this song very much. The the net here uh, not uh, not good. Is that YouTube? Yeah, 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 this is YouTube. This is YouTube. Yes. I graduate from Bethlehem University. I have BA at accounting. I like the sheep. Uh, but uh, I need a uh, job. The story of Jesus. Yeah. Born uh, at Bethlehem. From this road, you can go uh, to Bethlehem from this road. This is Bethlehem. It's a small city, not a big city. We have Bethlehem, we have big world. Mary and Joseph, if he coming today? No, because the big wall is close to Bethlehem. He want permit from Israel. I come here every day at 1 o'clock a.m. to sell coffee and tea for the workers who cross to Jerusalem. In the back of me, there is the wall. 12 meters in the sky with 700 kilometers around Jerusalem. It's very hard to come into Bethlehem because people think the Palestinian people are terrorists. Bethlehem is the city that Jesus was born in it. He came to, to tell the people about the meaning of the peace, the meaning of the love, the meaning of the life together. The angel came to, to Maryam yeah. and told them that he has pregnant. Yeah. Maryam do not like this because uh, uh, I do not have married from where the baby, their uh, family, and they killed him. The honor, the killing. Honor killing. Honor killing. In our land, she must marry. It's shame for us. If it's not be killed, they will be thrown from her home. When she's pregnant and alone, it's her first time to have a baby. It's, I imagine God, God helped her. She accepted his will, and she was ready to fight any obstacles. Uh, yeah, she was a strong woman. Gold is a king. And whatever circumstances we live, we have his identity, and we give him our loyalty too. This is a water container. People would hide gold in these jobs. Incense burner and frankincense means the priesthood. Jesus would carry our prayers and will carry us up to the Father. Without him, we cannot reach the Father. This is what Mir been carried in, and Mir is a sign for the sufferings that he would carry. They expected to see a prince in a castle. They did not expect a baby born in poverty. It's uh, not rich. It's, uh, it's very poor. I know all this. God loves the poor people, rich people, old people. He's a refugee. Jesus is a refugee. They wanted to kill him. There was order to kill all the children of Bethlehem, newborns to uh, two years old. That's why she flew to Egypt. 
سيدنا عيسى يكون قدوة Jesus born Mervigi because God he wanted to teach us how if Jesus born Mervigi what about us and he teach us about to give forgiveness and love They come from God to give him the message for peace. This is the important thing that the God is told to Isa to, 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 to the people. Yes. The Prince of Peace being born in the most troubled land on earth, it has like a significance maybe. We need peace inside ourselves and we need peace all over the world. We can feel the peace in our life because we have a hope. Hope coming where we understand each other, and the hope coming where we understand God for our life. I think Jesus knocking uh, doors of the hearts of people, and He asked for anyone to open for Him to start the new Christmas with Him. Easter is the principle of peace. Yes, Easter is the, is the principle of peace. Stilis. shepherds in the Bible story he didn't picture them walking around with a cell phone watching YouTube videos when you pictured Bethlehem he thought of this holy mystical city it was just a city it was a poor people city and as they said in that video Jesus the Prince of Peace was born into the most troubled region on the planet they've been fighting in that region for thousands of years, neighbors hating neighbors because of the tribe or the, or the nationality or the religion or the ethnicity that they come from. Into that, a scared 15-year-old girl comes up pregnant, unmarried, and she goes, how can this possibly be? I'm an innocent young girl. I've never been intimate with a man before. How can this possibly be? And what did the, the angel kept saying? The angels kept appearing in his story saying, don't be afraid. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't. Why is that? Because everybody in the story was afraid. Herod was afraid. The Magi were afraid of what Herod was going to do. Mary was afraid. Joseph was afraid. The shepherds were afraid. Everybody was scared. And so the angels kept saying, it's okay, don't be scared. Fear not, it's okay, it's all right. But put yourself in that position, a 15-year-old unmarried girl in a culture in which honor killings were the norm. You come up pregnant, you have disgraced the family, and it was the family obligation to put you out or put you to death. Let's keep Christmas real. This is the real story of Christmas. And yet, and yet, Mary was most highly favored of God. He had chosen her for this mission to carry the Son of God and give him life on this planet so that you could have eternal life with Christ forevermore. Let's keep it real this morning. Some of you here need that eternal life. You came here this morning not sure of your eternal destiny, but you need to know. You need to be sure. In just a few minutes, we're going to partake of the body and blood of Jesus in the form of Holy Communion. You can call it the Lord's Supper. You can call it the Eucharist. You can call it whatever, you, whatever word your tradition assigns to it. But before you do that, you need to be sure. You really need to be sure that your destiny is sealed and your, your faith is in Christ. Jesus didn't remain in the manger. We're not worshiping in a baby in the manger today. We're worshiping the one who lived and died and was resurrected and went back to the Father to prepare a place for you. That's the reality of Christmas this morning. So I'm going to pray for you. And I would like, if you would, everybody in the building, if you would just close your eyes right where you're sitting. Nobody looking around for just a minute. If you're here this morning and you are not certain, you're just really not certain if, that if you died today, if this was your last day on the planet, you're not certain that you'd go to heaven. Would you be honest enough to acknowledge that? Just slip a hand up and nobody's looking around. There, people are not looking around. If you're not sure, let's be sure today, okay? Because you can be sure right here. 
today. I'm going to pray for you, and I'm going to ask you to, to pray in your heart along with me. Lord Jesus, there's some people in this room who slipped up their hand and acknowledged that if they died today, they're not completely sure of their eternal destiny. But Lord, I know you want to make that destiny sure. And so this morning, Father, we ask that you would come into their hearts. Move in, Lord, and take over today, right now, as they confess their need of you by raising their hand, Father. We ask that you would give them an assurance in their hearts today that if they breathe their last breath on this planet, that they would wake up in glory. And so, Father, we thank you for your salvation that you sent in the form of a little baby, a refugee baby born in a poor family in a troubled land. We thank you, God, that the Prince of Peace can live in our hearts and give us peace that passes all understanding. Peace that we can't even begin to understand or describe because the Prince of Peace resides on the inside. We praise you and we thank you for that in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Virginia is going to come at this time and she's going to... She's going to lead us in taking communion, and I think she's got some people assigned to help her, and they're going into position. And so uh, we practice open communion. That means you don't have to be a member of this church. If you're a follower of Jesus, you're welcome to take part with us today. everyone um can i have our pastor nancy or oh, they are in position already okay my my assistants yeah they're gonna pass out the whole community elements yeah so please everyone take um one cup and also um, a piece of bread holy communion is to um remember what christ did yeah in his life death and his resurrection yeah So as they pass out um, a cup and also um, the bread, I'm going to read you something from the books of Exodus 12, 14. And it says, the night before our Messiah, Jesus, was to endure his suffering on the cross, he, excuse me, he assembled himself with his beloved disciples to share in the Passover. The Passover was part of the Old Testament law one of those very special anointed appointed times that the Lord gave to Israel on her yearly calendar. This is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it, celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance in Exodus 12:14. As they were all enjoying the Passover, cedar that's the holiday ritual meal in that upper room in jerusalem almost two thousand years ago jesus i stopped there and in serving this holy communion we are proclaiming his death until he comes
Can everyone please stand? Did everyone get a, a Holy Communion element? If you don't have one, please raise your hand. I'm going to read from the 1 Corinthians 11, 23. For I pass unto you what I received from the Lord himself on the day which he was betrayed. The Lord Jesus took some bread, have your bread, and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to memory as often as you drink for it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let's drink. going to reflect here on Jesus um, what he did for us yeah so we're going to just um, close our eyes and just praise God yeah for for a minute or so yeah and just set, tell the Lord that we remember his death on the cross yeah and his resurrection so let's all just reflect on and give the, um, the Lord thanks yeah yes, Lord. we remember you Lord how you died for on the cross for our sins Lord how you took our sins. I remember you, Lord, also, Lord, for your suffering, Lord. We remember, Lord, for the shedding of your blood, Lord. We remember, Lord, the sacrifice, Lord. It wasn't easy, and we thank you, Lord. We remember, Lord. We always remember what you did for us on that day, Lord. Thank you. So this is in our service, yeah. God bless you. Thanks. <laughs>